For many years, I struggled with a simple reality. I was not going to be a full-time rabbi, and, and I was not going to be a full-time academic. I had started uh, engineering school when I was young, and even in the midst of those studies, I was already fixated on uh, Jewish history and Jewish theology. But I knew that getting a full-time position as a rabbi or as a professor was not going to be simple. They're not something that are, you know, they're not, it's not a plentiful uh, array, you know, for people that are looking for work. And my concern was long-term stability and the ability to have a family. And I've always been concerned about an issue of compromise. That is to say that if you're in a pulpit position, one might say, you, you might have to compromise because you're in, you know, your endeavors are ultimately tied to the the giving of congregants. And if you say something incorrect or something, you always have to be sort of considering those issues. And I thought that would essentially compromise whatever convictions I might have. Now, that's not to say that there aren't rabbis who don't have positions where they're able to speak their mind and, and do so without any concern over their livelihood. But it was always something in the back of my mind that made me consider the pros and cons of that kind of arrangement. Now, in this last week's parasha, we saw Parashat Re'ev, where Moshe Rabbeinu says, you know, see, today I, I set before you the blessing and the curse. Um, I think in many ways we forget the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu, as Rabbi Baruch Gelman explains, lived in the royal court of Egypt. He saw the technological advances, the architectural advances, the agricultural elements, the, the astronomy, all the different elements that were present there without question. But he also saw the negative aspects, of course, the enslavement of people. He saw the sorcery, the, the witchcraft, magic, the sexual depravity. Uh, that was something that was characteristic of ancient Egypt, at least according to Torah standards. And when he tells the children of Israel, see, I'm setting this before you today, it wasn't something theoretical, not something that he had never seen or experienced, but he had seen both worlds. And he could honestly tell them, listen, I've seen the other side and Hashem is essentially offering you another path, an opportunity towards this covenant and this land that will help you live in a state of bracha, of blessing. Now, the reason that I mentioned this issue on a personal level about my personal struggles was that at the time I saw my necessity to follow a conventional career, I wouldn't say as a curse, but I didn't necessarily see it as a positive. I saw it as something that was uh, not ideal because I didn't get to study in the Kolel and I didn't get to study in Yeshiva all day. All my studies were part-time over 15 years going to uh, Spurtis and going to uh, uh, Siegel and the, the Yeshiva Mesilat Sharim and all these different programs. And it was something that was you know, taxing in a sense because I had my full-time endeavor as an engineer, but I also had these studies. And I thought, oh, how wonderful it would be if I had, you know, the same kind of situation that other people have had when they become rabbis. But I realize now that in the midst of that challenge, there was a blessing, and that is to understand the realistic endeavors and challenges that the people who attend our community, our chavara, experience. You know, they get up in the morning, and if, you know, they got to go to work, they, they lay to fill in, they do the brachot, they do the prayers, they do every, all these things, and they have to struggle with the complexities of life and their uh, their commitment to living out a Jewish life on a daily basis. And I, even though I'm the rabbi, I have to do the same things. I have to, you know, report for work. I mean, nowadays I have a home office, but before that I had to go to the office, I had to travel, I had to do all those things, and I had to struggle to put things together in such a way that I could live a religious life in accordance with my convictions. And I think in that sense, I see the the bracha, the blessing of that, because Sometimes it's easy for individuals to di dictate things to people and say, oh, this is what you should do. Um, it's another thing to experience them yourself. Now, I've always adopted the view that you always shoot for the high position. You always say this is the standard, but then you realize where people are and, and you work with them and you work with yourself with the limitations that you have and you endeavor to do the best that you can. So you don't lower the standard, but you work with what you have and then you sort of encourage people to continue to learn and to apply the circumstances that are realistic for them. And so in that sense, I see the benefit because it's not theoretical for me. It's something that I can completely relate to. We have a, a working class or a professional class community. People have jobs that are, uh, you know, the full range of uh, industries. Um, and so it's something I think in many ways is reflective. You know, my position is reflective of the reality that other people's face. Um, I remember another story that was told by Rabbi Baruch Gelman about Rabbi uh, Shmelke of Nicholsburg, a very famous Hasidic Rebbe, who 
was given uh, a new community, or he became the rabbi of a new community, and his drashot over the first series of weeks were on literature, art, and uh, music, and all these kinds of things, and the congregants were somewhat confused because they had heard, you know, so Talmin Chacham, this uh, great rabbi, and he's going to give us, you know, drashot, and, uh, you know, what is this business of, you know, science and literature and these kinds of things, and the rabbi explained to them that if I had come to you only by talking about the Torah, you would say, okay, well, that's what he knows, and that's all that he can offer. But because I've traveled the world, because I've you know experienced these different things, I've studied and I've learned, I'm able to share with you what I've learned, and I can show you that in the midst of that, despite having experienced these different elements of human knowledge, I can now say, well, the Torah is still what is most important about life. This is the revelation that Hashem has given to us. And I can show you that it's not theoretical that I've experienced that breath of knowledge and the Torah is still what is most important. And so I think looking back at, again, my personal experiences, I see, you know, in my job, mathematics and science and engineering. And sometimes people characterize those as secular subjects, but they're really reflective of divine knowledge, the ability that Hashem has given to man to formulate, you know, uh, theories and apply them and see them come into fruition. And it's amazing because you can see the uh, the intellect that Hashem has given to humankind at play in these different elements of work, at least in the industry that I have. But it, it applies to any industry, whether it's medicine or construction or whatever it is that it might be. There's some element of human endeavor that has created the ability to, to bring these things about. And so it gives us a fuller understanding of the human experience. And as a consequence, it allows us to convey to our children and to our friends that we are not simply, you know, limited in our knowledge to Torah, but we see the world and all of its knowledge through the lens of the Torah and how Hashem's majesty is revealed in all these different elements. And so in that sense, there's not a difference in the secular and the holy. Yes, there's a difference between the mundane and, you know, the six days of, of labor and the, and the seventh day of rest. But Hashem has given us the ability to infuse those elements with uh, the divine element, if you will, by living a life of Kedushah, of holiness. And I think that's the challenge that I see and the blessing that I see in the midst of that, uh, that difficulty that I once considered to be a difficulty, but now I understand to be part of the human experience.